I guess it would help if I unmuted myself. Good day, everybody. I hope you're having a good Sunday afternoon. I'm D'Artagnan, and I'm here to bring you another afternoon, well, part of an afternoon of music. Today's stream is going to be a little shorter. Um, I've been in front of this computer a lot over the last few days, and I just uh, actually skipped out of a meeting early to make sure that I could get my stream started relatively on time. So, uh, and it's also, uh, I, unbeknownst to me until three hours ago, because I really do not pay attention to sports at all. Um, it's a Super Bowl Sunday. So I imagine it's probably going to be a quieter stream today. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, for that reason, I'm also uh, going to end early uh, just because lots of people will probably be watching football. And like I said, I've been in front of this computer a lot uh, over the last few days. So, um, but uh, I'm excited to play my violin. So I'm like, OK, I, I'm not going to cancel the stream today. I'm still going to play a little bit and uh, and have some fun with it. And last week's stream was so awesome. The, some of the conversations that we had were just amazing. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to try to have some more fun today. Cool, cool. All righty. I'm just going to make sure that my audio settings are good here. And start with one of my favorite fiddle tunes. With the duet. Make sure my desktop audio is on. Oh, whoop. that doesn't sound right. Okay, let me just, uh, you know what? I might have to, actually, it didn't sound like anything at all. I'm going to have to restart Audacity since I had had to make a bunch of audio switches. Okay, what are we at now? Let's see. Da, da, da. Okay, will it work this time? Yes, there we go. <laughs> Got it. Both, actually, I guess I should just double check that in Streamlabs too. Uh, yep, it's working in Streamlabs as well. Okay, cool, here we go. Sweet, that's my one of my favorites, the Tiger Hills Two Step. So much fun to play duets. It's more fun with another person, but you know, when you have to multi-track and play it by yourself, it's not it's not not too terrible either. Alrighty. Let's play a waltz.
There we go. Awesome. I have to say, uh, one of the one of the big things that I got ready for the stream this week was I finally finished uh, building and installing my custom light boxes, and I'm like, oh wow, the image on the screen is so much better now. My face doesn't like glow constantly bright white. Con contrary to what many people are believing, I'm not like a luminescent, you know, angel. No, I don't think people believe that actually. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go but now i don't look all uh glowy and pasty white i think white balance looks all right yeah could use a little bit more color i might play around with some more filters later um but uh yep i got my uh, custom light boxes made uh one on each side to kind of even things out and uh Kind of, I mean, they're super simple, uh, but uh, I kind of made them a little bit fancy. I uh, included a, a dimmer switch on my desk so that I can control them right from my seat. Basically, you know, I've got my entire control center uh, done up nicely. Hi, Mom. How's it going? So, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, let's do one more fiddle tune. Uh, let's see. One more fiddle tune and then we'll do some... Uh, oh, good, good. We'll do some uh, classical or Baroque stuff for a little bit. Yep, uh, we're going to have a shorter stream today. As I was uh, mentioning earlier, people are still filtering in though. So yeah, we're going to be sh a little bit shorter today just because, like I said, I've been in front of the computer a lot this weekend. Um, had a full group class teaching day yesterday and then a bunch of church related stuff a three hour congregational meeting which I actually had to duck out of early to start my stream relatively on time and then for those of you who are interested in football apparently it's Super Bowl Sunday which I only found out about three hours ago because I don't follow sports <laughs> so there we go but that's all right it'll it's still gonna be a good stream i'm gonna probably go till around somewhere between 5 and 5 30 um and then uh call it quits early tonight but we still got lots of cool stuff happening My favorite pieces, unaccompanied pieces by Bach. A bourre, which is a sort of a dance. Well, it is a dance. It's a kind of a different kind of a dance. Of course, some of these old dances that uh, uh, you, uh, people play from like the classical and Baroque era, I wonder if, you know, anybody really knows how to, how many people know how to do them anymore. I've never seen what a bourre looks like. Um, I can, I think I've so, so seen old footage of like minuets, um, but, uh, I'd have to probably do some research on that. Uh, of course, you know, uh, people who know me here know that I know a lot about, uh, Lindy Hop swing dancing, um, and a little bit about, you know, some of the dance forms that I play on my violin, but not a whole lot. Uh, the bulk of my dance knowledge is from the early 20th century, but here we go. A bourree by Bach.
almost got distracted there for a second. I was like, as I was looking at the screen every so often, it was just the way the light was coming off of the my left softbox. It was made it look like I was something wrong with my left eye, but no, it's it's just the way the light is hitting my glasses. I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> All right, but this lighting is great. I am so glad I finally got these made and, and put up. So, cost me next to nothing, too. I mean, real soft boxes are cheap, but, uh, or, well, they're, I shouldn't say they're cheap. They're not that expensive, but uh, some of them are way too big, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to be able to fit those into my space, so I custom made my own. And, uh, of course, we had lots of fabric. I raided my wife's sewing room, and she helped me put the fabric diffusers on them and stuff like that. And then, like I said, I bought um, this fancy, uh, well, it's not that fancy, but uh, dimmer switch that I could just put right next to my keyboard. Although these light bulbs that I put in there are junk. Uh, they're supposed to be dimmable, but they don't actually dim. They just flicker when you try to dim them. So I got to get better bulbs. But at full brightness, though, that's what kind of makes your camera look, look the best because webcams are... They've got such a small aperture, and in order to make a webcam look really good, you gotta flood your your space with light. So, all right, uh, the humoresque by Dvorak. <laughs> Just as I was wrapping that up, it occurred to me that there's an old duet part that I used to know um, back in my school days in in the old Suzuki group class. I'm going to have to see if I can find it because there is a really cool uh, duet part that we came up with uh, for this one. So 
gotta I gotta put that on the list of of old music that I have to find. There, I think there are other duets printed for it as well. I think I've got one kicking around somewhere that I could probably dig out pretty quickly, but I, it's going to take me a bit to find the old one from from my uh, Suzuki student days. It was gorgeous, though. Absolutely. All right. A little bit of Beethoven. I'm kind of hitting some of Perlman's favorites today. Uh, short, short favorites. Um, his more complicated favorites I am not capable of playing just yet. But uh, a few weeks ago... Um, it was a few weeks ago. No, before Christmas sometime. Anyway, I showed my students a recording of Perlman playing La Ronde Lutin by Bazzini, which is just an incredibly amazing and awesome uh, virtuosic piece. Well, I'm, I'm a decent violinist, but I'm not a virtuoso. I could, I can play the virtuosic repertoire, or at least I should say I'm capable of it, but it takes me a long time to practice that stuff. So, Eventually, one day, I'm going to learn that piece. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, that, that could be a long time coming, so <laughs> we'll see. It would be fun, though. It'd be lots of fun. It's really cool, too, because in an episode of Futurama, the robot devil played it as well um, with, like, two bows and, yeah, just crazy. Kind of funny. And I had to continue to explore uh, music too, especially uh, multi-track stuff, duets, uh, chamber music and orchestral music. I've been coming up with more cool ideas, which like I say, will take a little while to implement, um, uh, especially the larger orchestral works. But there's so much uh, Baroque music that I can do, even with a full orchestra, because I can have the computer generate the tracks. Uh, some of them, I'll have to play some of the parts myself and multi-track it, but uh I'll have to see how good the harpsichord sounds on uh, Muse score because I can't play the harpsichord, nor do I own one. Uh, so if the computer can make a good sounding harpsichord, then I'll use the computer to create the harpsichord tracks. And then the computer viol the computerized violin sounds like garbage, but uh, so I'll have to record those myself. Um, and then I have to figure out how what I'm gonna, how I'm going to handle the. I can do the viola parts too, but I'll have to figure out how I'm going to handle the cello. 
might have to do like some uh formant or mod shifting so that i could like play the cello part on viola and then um and then uh shift it down like two octaves so <laughs> we'll see all right oh just give me one second it looks like my stream is lagging a bit Twitch says, okay, let's refresh this. Okay, that was just a browser problem. Bitrate looks good. Okay, cool. Let's hop back into some, oh, you know what? We haven't done any jazz for a while, although some of the items from this jazz book don't stand well without the piano part. Uh, let's see. Oh, this Greek one might be good. And of course, that reminds me of more ideas that I have. I've got my uh, my grandfather's uh, some of his old Greek instruments. I have a bazooki upstairs and and a mandolin. They are in horrible shape, though. Uh, they weren't very well looked after over the last few years, and the mandolin has uh, several fairly large cracks on the back. Although they're along the seams, so it's possible that it could be repaired. I mean, I might uh, try to play them and see if they still sound okay, even okay even though uh they're they're in rough shape because if they sound all right then i could create some cool accompaniment parts i don't know the first thing about playing the bazooki but um the mandolin is tuned the same as a violin so i should be able to figure that one out um and then use it to uh create some some cool accompaniment parts for for some of this music like especially some of the greek music that i have but even some irish music and celtic music uses like uh bazooki and mandolins and things like that so or uh double string guitars um but i don't have any experience playing fretted instruments at all so a mandolin would be a good start because uh it's tuned exactly the same as a violin i can figure that one out but to figure out a bazooki or a guitar would take me a little longer um, but that would be a cool addition. I watch some of these other musical streamers on Twitch, and so many of them ha are, can play multiple instruments um, and uh, just, you know, pull out all kinds of stuff. Uh, that violin chick uh, also, she sings and she uh, plays a ukulele as well. And uh, then there's this guy, oh, what's his name? Uh, I want to say Jonathan Ong. He's like, he's a really big streamer. I should really know this actually I, I i followed him a while ago let's just see i'm pretty sure that's his name i don't watch him very often though well, because these kickers number Oops. one that was uh, a, a random stream that just uh popped up on my desktop audio okay let's see uh yeah jonathan ong he's like he's a really big streamer actually and he plays the piano and he does a ton of other stuff uh uh, all kinds of uh, loops and, and different things. Uh, he's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So you have to go check him out. All right. 
Uh, what else is in this Gypsy Jazz book? That might sound good on its own if I don't stop, you know, if I stop dropping the music, right? Okay, here we go. Here's a good Irish one. Speaking of Irish music. I haven't played this one for a while. Uh, let's see. This one is gorgeous. This one is by Rameau. It is a gavotte, a slower gavotte, uh, a gavotte's a type of dance as well. Um, and I don't play this one very often, so let's uh, let's play it.
Alrighty. Good, good, good. All right, let's bring back some of those great old fiddle duets. I'm gonna close that project. Open. Ooh. Choices, choices, choices. I've actually got a few of these piled up already now. Still need to do more, but yeah, I've got a few good options. Let's do this one. Just have to find it in the book now. The April Morning Waltz. That's somewhere close to the front of the book. Welcome, if you're just joining us, uh, we're going to be uh, slightly shorter tonight, uh, just for a few things. Uh, I've been in front of the computer a lot lately, and I've also been extremely busy in my shop. Um, so, plus it's Super Bowl Sunday, so I'm expecting kind of a quieter stream, so we're probably going to cut it off early tonight, or this afternoon. Um, but hey, I'm glad you're here. We're still going to have fun, as soon as I can find the piece that I'm looking for. <laughs> There we go. All right. Here we go. Another one, the Lake Audi Waltz, and that one is close by as well. I've recorded the duet for that one as well. Almost there, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if my fingers are warmed up enough for this one.
little stiff there. <laughs> my arms and my shoulders are still stiff from a few days ago. Well, doing lots of work in my shop, but uh, sort well, sort of. Not a lot, a lot. But I've been trying to build my new workbenches, and I was spending a lot of time on my on the lighting for my stream. Um, but, uh, we also had a new, uh, dryer delivered. I think I was telling you all last week that our ancient dryer finally bit its last, uh, um, had, had its, had its final death. I kept fixing that machine every time it broke. Um, and I could have fixed it this time, but the part was way too expensive. So I was like, well, are we just going to, maybe we'll just go and get another machine. So we went and found another good used dryer and, uh, I had to help the guy carry it into the house and I, got myself a little sore from that um but uh and then of course you know continue working on stuff i've been doing a lot of cooking lately too uh some of you who follow me on facebook and instagram probably saw the uh, amazing apple pie that me and my wife tag teamed last night um first pie that we've ever made together from scratch and the first pie i've made from scratch in probably like 10 years went really well and then i made my grandmother's borscht um, which was a thing for today, pie and soup, because after church we had a congregational meeting, and because we can't meet in person right now, we can't do the, the pie and soup potluck. So everybody did pie and soup at their own home, and it was quite lovely. So, And whenever I make borscht, I've got to make the most massive pot that we've got. It lasts several days, which is good. I was also gifted this amazing pie plate uh, from some old students from mine of mine like six or seven years ago, um, a family that I used to have in my studio, and I finally used that plate to make pie, and it is a very big, very deep pie plate, so this was a very large pie. All It's really, really good stuff. So... So with that, actually, I'm going to uh, just rest my shoulders for a few minutes, flip it. All right, and then we're back. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. If you're just joining us, welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. It's kind of a quiet afternoon. I think most people are watching the Super Bowl right now. Um, but if you're just joining us, yeah, we'll be ending a little early tonight. Uh, I've had a really busy few days, but it's been, it's all been really, really good. So got my softbox lighting done for my streaming setup. I'm continuing to get stuff done in my shop and I've been baking and cooking. It's been fun. It's been lots of fun. All right. Another recorded duet, the Meadowlark Waltz. And then I'm going to have to uh, maybe do some sight reading duets today. That'll be fun. Okay, so this waltz, I've played it before, but I haven't recorded it. Uh, I haven't recorded the the, the parts. Well, actually, just let me double check here, see what's on my list. Yeah, no, I have not recorded this one. So let's see. Um... Okay, and let's check for markings. There we go. Okay, cool. Let's record the first violin part. Add new stereo track. Microphone volume is good. Okay. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll uh, let's see. Yeah, I could record the second violin part first and then play the melody on top of it. 
Um, doesn't matter. I'll do the first violin part. That way you guys can hear the melody on its own. best work but uh, it'll probably sound all right with the uh, second violin part I'm going to probably redo that recording at some point. Uh, so I'm not even going to save that. It was okay. It was okay. All right. Let's close that one. No, don't save. Okay. Back to some classics. I mean, classical classics. Here's a piece by Mozart.
if you're just joining us, don't forget to hit that follow button. Of course, it is a quiet night tonight, but yeah, I think that has a lot to do with the Super Bowl today. So, all right, now on to the next one, back to the Baroque era. A piece by Corelli, a Courant, which is another type of a dance. I'm just going to check one little thing here. I've actually been noticing that quite a few people. <laughs> Oops, what? and there goes the somebody's stream again. Um, yeah, like almost all the people that I follow on Twitch <laughs> and most of the people that I recommend um, are all offline right now. <laughs> I think nobody wants, uh, there's, there's one person besides me on my list that's on, I mean, there's lots of people online, um, but on my list, there's like only one other person besides me that's online right now. There's actually lots of good uh, music online right now, though. So there you go. After this stream ends, if you're looking for something else to watch, if you're not into football, uh, do check out some of the other channels, uh, other music channels. There is a ton of good stuff and really wonderful creators on Twitch. And uh, I'll actually just double check, too, to see if that violin chick is planning on, on uh, streaming tonight. Uh, let's see. Her calendar... We're at the 7th. Whoops, that's the wrong calendar. Oh, she doesn't have her February calendar up yet. Okay, don't even know what she's planning on today. Uh, so there we go. I guess that's that. I'll see if that violin habit is on tonight. She's usually on quite a bit later. Um, let's see, stream schedule. Oh, yeah, she's supposed to be on... Uh, probably around eight o'clock. It says seven Pacific. So, um, I'm assuming she's on tonight. Um, but, uh, yeah. So if you're looking for another good violinist on Twitch, uh, the violin habit is on tonight. Very likely, uh, probably that violin chicken a little bit. Um, not totally sure. Um, but yeah, there we go. I, mean, I still got a few more in me though. So I'm going to play a few more pieces before I go. And, uh, have a little bit more musical fun here. Pull out some of my other favorites. Oh, uh, let's see. That's the Bach Concerto. Like I said a couple weeks ago, I'm going to do a whole computerized arrangement of that one at some point. Oh, here's a good one.
a nice jig by Ba. All right. onto one of my all-time favorites that I'm probably going to have to uh, create some piano tracks for. I think I play this one almost every week. I definitely need to add something to it. Whoops. Nope. Well, maybe that was some, that's something different. What was the channel? Oh, yeah. One of my other uh, streaming buddies is online. Video gamer, though, not music. And they're a pretty big channel. They just came online and they've already got 4,000 people watching. <laughs> so it's like, whoa, whoa. I think it'll be a very long time before I get that popular. <laughs> I haven't played this one for a really long time. This is a minuet. It's part of a larger sonata, but I'm not going to play the whole sonata tonight. Uh, this is the Vericini Sonata in G major. Um, wait. Yes. No. <laughs> Sorry, not G major. E minor. Um, but uh, this minuet... Uh, is an E major. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time since I played this one. Let's see how it uh, how it's weathered the passage of time. And then I've got a good story from this weekend about something that has not weathered the passage of time particularly well. But it's a funny story. ending didn't fare so well um <laughs> oops um but it reminded me of um i told a story to my students yesterday in their group classes because i uh, uh with with uh, the pandemic still on and with uh, all my classes still being online i've had to come up with all kinds of unique ways of of managing a group class online um and uh so far it's been really really cool uh come up with a lot of unique ideas that my students have really loved and yesterday we decided to master class instead 
of group class. For those that don't know, a master class is like a semi-private lesson. You're in there with at least three or four other students having a private lesson for a rather short amount of time in front of the others. And you, you all contribute to the lesson, right? And so I had one of my students play and then the other students would say what they liked about that performance. And then I would, you know, work with the student for a few minutes to just uh, touch up something in the piece and then go on to the next student. Um, master classes are particularly popular among the university students uh, train and training professionals um, uh, because it helps you get exposure to other methodologies, you study with uh, other, other teachers, and you get to work with other students that you might not necessarily know. So for my students, it was a rather benign experience because, uh, you know, they were still doing the master class with their own teacher and their own friends. Um, but, uh, it brought up stories from my past about master classes that I had been in. Um, and, uh, one particular piece of music that has not stood the test of time because I haven't really reviewed it. It's, it's a very large piece of music and I don't really have cause to review it because I'm not, um, an orchestral soloist is the Sibelius Violin Concerto. When I studied this piece in my undergrad, um, I, uh, I may have bitten off more than I could chew. My teacher thought it would be a good, a good challenge. And by the end, I, I could play the concerto uh, okay, uh, decent anyway. Um, uh, and uh, I remember at one time, though, and I told this story to my students yesterday because some of them had pieces so long that we didn't have time to play the whole thing. And this is what happened to me um, in a master class with James Ennis. Uh, we each only had 20 minutes with him. Well, the first movement of Sibelius is close to 16 minutes long, so I'm like, okay, there's no way I have time to play the whole thing and then get any decent amount of work done with him. Plus, at the at the time, I still hadn't really finished polishing the entire movement, so I decided I was going to stop at the end of the third page. And I told him this, and he was totally cool with it. So, um, but uh, some master classes are open to the public, and so. Uh, you can sometimes, if you know a master class is happening, you can walk into the classroom or into the recital hall where it's taking place and watch the performances and the lessons. And for some really weird reason, a ton of people, a ton of strange people flooded the recital hall when it was my turn to play. Um, just, you know, totally by happenstance, because there was no program, nobody knew who was playing when. And uh, so I, I go down to the front and I get up on stage and I tell James Ennis that I'm going to stop at where I'm going to stop. And he's like, yeah, good, good. And so I stop at that particular part and it's a chord, it's, it's a chord that does not resolve. So it's like totally hanging out there. Everybody knows the piece is not over, but I just stopped dead in my tracks, right? And so there's dead silence in the hall. Nobody's clapping after my performance because, well, yeah, you know, the piece really isn't over, actually. But James Ennis, knowing when what I was doing, started uh, applauding and whistling and, and uh, you know, hollering for me. And then everybody else in the hall is like, okay. <laughs> Anyway, long story short, I had told that story so many times yesterday that I finally decided to dig out my music for the Sibelius Violin Concerto, and I started doodling around with the first movement again, trying to see if I could still play it, and I cannot. <laughs> there are some parts of it I can still play, but most of it is just, just terrible. So, um, yeah, I don't know, someday, someday I might resurrect that one. I want to learn the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Um, uh, which is actually connected to some Sibelius stories of mine as well, because I one during one competition I totally obliterated the third movement in front of another uh, great Canadian violinist, and then she told me I should go play the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, which really isn't that far back actually, uh, and so and it's a gorgeous one too, and so that's also on my bucket list. So, I've got Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, I've got La Ronde de Lutin by Pazzini, I might relearn Sibelius at some point. Um, but that's, uh, well, it's probably not very likely. Uh, <laughs> so it's good times though. All right. I'm going to play a couple more here. Let's see. Here's a good one by Bach.
right. And I think I'm going to leave you with one more piece today. It's a, uh, it's a Gavotte by Martini. Uh, it's a rondo form, so it has a very familiar melody that comes back a lot. And uh, then I will leave you to the rest of your weekend. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today for a short, uh, shorter musical uh, time. Not really a concert. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you're if you're in uh, much of Canada or the northern states, do stay warm. Uh, we've got one heck of a polar vortex uh, going on here. Um, it's it's not uh, it's not pleasant out there. I mean, it looks nice, beautiful, clear you know, crisp white snow and uh, clear sky, but uh, you step outside and you'll like freeze solid in, you know, a few seconds. So stay warm, stay safe, and we will see you next Sunday. Take care. <laughs>